Saturday mornings and coming here. We really, really appreciate it. Um, we wanted to start off uh, with respectfully acknowledging the unceded um, traditional territories that we all live, work, and play on, including the Squamish, Slavitooth, and Musqueam nations on which SFU Vancouver, where we are right now, is located. Um, I also invite all of you to, um, and all of us, myself included, to reflect on our own position as uninvited uh, settlers and what that means for our organizing our work and our everyday lives, whether for you that means giving donations, um, attending events or reading to make ourselves more aware, or showing up or showing presence. As we will highlight, there's a rally that we've all been invited to participate in uh, being organized by uh, the Slave Tooth Nation Sacred Trust Initiative and uh, that leads from the Vancouver Art Gallery. So we'll highlight that again toward um, the end. Um, I am a lecturer here at SFU, but my more relevant work today is as an organizer with the Asian Canadian uh, Labor Alliance, the organization that has put this event together. Um, ACLA acknowledges the support that has been provided uh, by David Lamb Center and Labor Studies at SFU. Um, and you'll hear more from ACLA and the ACLA core organizers toward the end. Um, this event is part of a speaker series, which is going to be focusing on the voices of Asian Canadian labor and community organizers. Um, and so toward the end, we'll give you an idea of what to expect going forward and the kind of work um, that many of my fellow organizers are already invested in. This event today focuses on uh, the wonderful panelists you see sitting before you, on the locked out workers who have been locked out of um, the Hilton uh, for uh, over a year, or just about a year now. Um, and so many of you would already have seen, especially if you've been transiting through um, the area where their picket line is, you would have seen their picket line outside. Um, you may have passed by and thought, well, this is terrible. But even as sympathizers, we don't really know what it's like to be there on the picket line every single day. We don't know what it's like to have, as you will hear, um, people who have worked for a place for so long that it becomes part of the rhythm of their everyday life. Once work becomes part of the rhythm of your everyday life, it becomes difficult for us to classify it as something separate, as work, as labor, in a formal sense. And maybe it's more about how we feel and how it affects our lives, the discontinuity when something like this happens. It's much more than can be captured in the word, we're locked up, we're fired, we're dismissed. Right? Those seem procedural in comparison. And that's part of um, what we wanted to do was focus more on who Lisa and Cecilia are as human beings as well as workers and how the two cannot be separated from one another. Um, with that, I'm going to hand it over to Stephanie Fung, who's going to introduce herself uh, and, and talk about um, what are the main themes that we're going to have. Um, yeah, uh, my name is Stephanie and I am the communications organizer for Unite Care Local 40. BC's Hospitality Workers Union. I am also a member of the Asian Canadian Labor Alliance. And as Anushe had mentioned, um, we're here today to talk about what's happening at Hilton Metro Town. You know, workers, um, Cecilia and Lisa have been locked up for almost a year at the picket line. And this event is really much, um, we're trying to create a space to, you know, share the stories of, um, of these workers. On their, and, you know, if they're not just hotel workers, like, I think that's a very, you know, simplistic view whenever we see workers right on the ticket line, but it's very much a space um, to hear more about, you know, Lisa's story and Cecilia's story and um, really kind of take a look, an, an in-depth look at their life as human beings and, you know, how they came to this hotel and why they decided to fight on the ticket line. So, yeah, and I just wanted to also give a brief um, overview about our union, United Care Local 40. We represent thousands of workers um, across British Columbia who work at hotels, uh, food services, and at airports. Um, our members are folks who cook for you, who clean for you, they clean the rooms, they greet you at the front desk, they make sure that you know your visit to BC or anywhere else in the province is warm and welcoming. So 
these are the folks who really, um, I think, build up these youth tourism industry. They're the ones who, who really make it successful. And you know, with people like Lisa and Cecilia, this is their work and their life, and, and it's, it's really important work. So when the pandemic hit um, BC in March 2020, 50,000 hotel workers were laid off. Um, instead of bringing them back to their jobs, many hotels started to terminate um, workers, and many of these workers are women, women of color. And at Hilton Metro Town, they terminated 97 long-term workers, many of them women, and locked the rest out. So Lisa and Cecilia were um, one of some of the workers that were locked out. And yeah, I just wanted to share um, what's been happening and. Um, how Lisa and Cecilia have been the ones leading the fight um, along with other women on the ticket line. So I feel like for me, a lot of my organizing, you know, building my relationships with the workers, um, that's just a really large part of the work I do and I really enjoy it. And I feel, um, yeah, Lisa and Cecilia are really key leaders, key committee members of, on the ticket line. And I always feel so inspired um, working with them. So. Yeah, so without, I don't want to take up too much space, so uh, I'm going to ask um, yeah, Lisa and Cecilia some questions. Um, could you share a bit about yourself? What were you doing before, before coming and working at Hilton Metro Town? And why did you decide to apply for a job at the hotel? So Lisa, you want to start? Sure. So um, my name is Lisa Secretary. Um, I've been in the health, working in the health for, now, for 21 years. Um, I arrived in Canada in 1992. I landed, I came here as a London immigrant. Um, it was very challenging um, from, you know, a country, um, you never think that, you know, coming to a big country. It's, I don't know what to, what to do, what kind of job I'm gonna have. But for me, it's an opportunity uh, when my brother sponsors my mom and uh, we traveled here. Um, when, I, when my friend um, introduced me um, and he said, are you interested to work on a hotel? For me, I don't have any experience at all. I don't know what is hotel. I never been to a hotel before coming to Canada. So I said, why not? And so he said, I, you know, uh, wants to have a particular position. I don't know what the particular position is. So he said, are you okay to work as a dishwasher? That's when I started in the hotel as a dishwasher. And I don't look at dishwasher, it's just a job. I enjoy doing it. And um, I was working in this uh, big hotel and I was, I'm proud of what I was doing before. And because working in the hotel, you have an opportunity to grow yourself, to learn more what is about in the hotel. It's an open door. So um, I, I asked my manager to work as a room service attendant if, I'm, I, I, if it's okay to have, to have an experience. So my manager challenged me, your English is not good enough. I will suggest you take a course. And I take that seriously myself. I said, well, there's nothing wrong. There's nothing that I lost. So I took English and then from there, it helps me a lot. Another friend introduced me to, inter to work at the Hilton. Since you have experience at that hotel, are you interested? There are brand new hotel. That I fell in love more. I never knew <laughs> that, you know, how, how enjoyable. I did I, I you know when you work and you come, go home and come back, that's not job. It's it's a life that you look forward every day. Yeah, so you you were at the hotel for twenty one years since day one when it opened? Um I yes, I uh, started on the same year uh, uh, at the hotel after it opened. So yeah, then Cecilia, you were there too um, for 21 years at the hotel, right? Could you share more about, um, yeah, what were you doing before then and why you decided to apply for a job at the hotel? My name is uh, Cecilia. I was a hairdresser. I am, came from the Philippines. 
I came here in Vancouver, was 1989, and I was a single mom raising my son. It was hard as being a herd raiser, but it wasn't stable because come and go and go. My friend told me about that uh, health and job, so I, I applied. Being a room attendant, that put in rooms every day, it was so hard to, to do it. And some, sometimes I, I skip my, my break so I could finish all the 14 rooms. And there's no, no lunch sometimes. And it's hard when I've done my, my 14 rooms. And I feel achy in my body because of those uh, uh, job to lifting all, you know, sometimes like you got you got 14 rooms and two double bed, so seven double bed, so equal like 14, 28 plus the, the rest of the room. So I just kind of, uh, you know, exhausted when I've done those rooms. Yeah, I mean, your job sounds yeah really physically challenging, um, skipping breaks. Um, I was wondering, do you have, um, do both of you have some like memories of your time at the hotel? Like any memories that stuck out for you? I, I started with I been started 21 years working the Hilton and. Uh, three months after the opening, as a full-time room attendant, the good memory, I can say, just our good relationship with my co-workers, with other team members. So, yeah, um, working at the hotel for 21 years. Um, it's, it's challenging time and this we have also found the good memories I have. Um, I found the man of my dream. I met my husband there and get and and we've been married for twenty years now. Um, he started working there and then he wants to grow somewhere uh, on his experience. And then I also celebrated my fiftieth birthday on the hotel. So the the Hilton Hotel is playing a big part of my life. Um, although that there is other uh, challenges, but the good memory is very precious to us. Yeah, I think being there for 21 years, you really start to see your co-workers like, as a family, right? And really get to know everyone and meeting your husband there. It's a really big part of your life. Um, I'm cu very curious about, you know, I, I wasn't there for 21 years, so I, I don't know how how the relationship with Local 40 began, but I'm curious to hear, um, did you know what a union was before when you started working at a hotel? Um, at what moment did you start to know what a union was and, and when you became involved? Um, when I started the hotel industry, I don't know what is union, because it's different being held in Philippines. And so when I started, um, they told me, this is a unionized hotel. I don't know what it means because on my mind is to work, to, to have a job. I never been, have a chance to talk to a union rib. And I don't know what is union rib because they just, it just like said, you know, um, they'll be there for you if you have a problem. And then my manager will say, if you have a problem, talk to us. So I don't know what to do. <laughs> so for those, for, for being in the local employee for, um, since 1996, uh, I really hardly uh, knew about union until we were locked out. Um, one of our captain in the picket line approached me after a few months of uh, being locked out and she said, Lisa, would you be okay to join the committee? And I said, what is that? I said, are you sure? And she said, yes. 
I said, what are you going to do? She said, you know, you just like, what are, what are your opinion and things like that. And I said, are you really sure? Do you trust me? So that, it's, it's, it was really for me. So I said, you know, I, it, was, it is my honor. And I'm thankful that you choose me. And you ask me. But I said, yes. And that, I saw the big picture being in the union, how it works. I understand more to be involved and for me I am very thankful that I said yes when I was asked. I, I understand more now what is a union, what is a committee and things like that. Mm -hmm. And um, could you share for those who don't know what a committee is, what does a committee member do? Yeah, um, we called ourselves um, the negotiation committee. We are talking um, not just about the picket line, also what we're fighting for and what are more important to this fight. What we really need, what we're really looking forward to be happening. So um, for a different people, different ideas, also it really amazed me that um, we're strong. <laughs> Yeah, and we're united. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, Cecilia, I know you were actually on the committee before Lisa, and you're also um, on the executive board. Um, I'm just wondering, did you know what a union was before you started working at the hotel, and um, how, how did you first become more involved with the union? Yeah, I, I was started realizing what the union could do when I learned about where Jews were going towards. Not for the pension, but to pay union stuff. Also, there was time when I had to skip my break to get all 14 rooms clean. The hotel management can decide who give this shape to how many, depending on how, and who the favorite is, but union helped us keep them in check and prevent this unfairness. Yeah, and um, I think you know, when I was t actually talking to some of uh, the members at the Asian Canadian Labor Alliance, they were also really curious to hear um, how organizers come and you know talk about the union. You know, Cecilia, you you were also just one of the workers who helped host visits um, from other organizers. Um, can you share what that was like? Yeah, uh, they visited me at my house just to talk about union business and to tell me the good news and how the union workers and help the members. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it, yeah, it's really important. It's like doing one-on-ones, um, organizers, building these um, relationships with workers. I think that's really important to form a stronger bond. Um, what, what is a typical day like for you when you are working at Hilton Metro Town? Uh, so, do you want to? Yeah. What, what was a typical day like for you? My typical day in the at the hotel. At the hotel, without the break. <laughs> 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 for the eight hours, there's no break. Just no lunch. That's my typical day. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. What time do you have to get up? In the morning? Uh, I, I get up, like when my son was uh, little, I get a breakfast at like 5.30, I make a breakfast and lunch for my son and get ready to go to work. Take the sky train, the hotel finish at 4.30, sometimes later. Sometimes I skip break, finish my job. I come home and get dinner ready. I go walk outside. What because I like to walk and get fresh air. Being room attendant physically demanding, but I'm lucky my body was been strong through the years. I know other women housekeeping their bodies are sore and end the day, but me, I take my, my taking walk every day and 
we and I have uh, co-workers. I think they were three ladies that was uh, um, re retired early at the age of 50 mm -hmm. because they have lots of you know body aching you know the, the hips the knee the shoulder mm -hmm. even though that I if I'm working like I'm working there full time but at the end of the day the whole body was very very bad so I'm checking Tylenol to make me. Yeah. yeah. And, and this is every day, like Monday to Friday? Yeah. 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 Um, For yeah. eight hours. Yeah. And uh, Lisa, what about you? Because yeah, you're not a room attendant, you're a night auditor. So that's a different, different typical day. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Uh, when people are sleeping, I am working. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, my typical day, I start with after my chef, which is 11 to 7, and I come home. I have to get my mom ready. Um, my mom, I'm looking after my 89-year-old mom. She has a severe dementia. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's very challenging when you come home. You get her ready, you know, breakfast, and then at the same time, you have to get some rest from the night. You go home, you read your chef, you have to set aside. You have to, to look what's in front of you on that morning. Uh, I hardly get sleep in the morning. I will get sleep most of the time when my husband gets home. I sleep really normally from three to four hours. And then I get up, go to work, same day. And uh, I really enjoyed uh, even the working at night because I'm staying uh, other people from other side of the world, and that is just like um, forget me that I'm it forgets me that I'm working right now. Yeah, well, that was what it was like um, before the pandemic hit. These were those were the, the days when you were working at Hilton Metro Town. Um, but but when the pandemic struck, you know, all of that your life suddenly changed, and. So can you tell us more about what happened um, during the lockout and when the pandemic? Um, when we were locked out, honestly, and myself, we nev I never thought we could not be this long. And I thought I said three months we will be okay if we cannot be that long, maybe six months. Um, when the three months pass, six months pass, we kind of, we don't know what's going to happen next. Um, what happened, the lockout, what the Hilton did to us, it's hurting. It's hurting for those long-time workers who've been building up the name of the hotel. And um, there are times that we, I ask sometimes myself, do I have to give up? And you have to think, oh no, if I don't stand for myself, if I give up now, what happened to others? So it's really hard, the luck out what our situation mentally, emotionally, and financially. It's really challenging, yeah. very challenging. Um, even helping my family back home. I don't know how to do that anymore. Especially with the pandemic with that with pandemic. Most of them lost the job. And I used to help them. But I don't know how to do that anymore because I'm also in need of of help. And last December my city got hit to the super typhoon. I have sisters lost their house because of the super typhoon. And I cannot even talk to them, offer them my help because of my situation. It is very challenging situation for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, so it's not just a lockout affecting you, but 
you know, it, it, the pandemic and it affected everyone. So you have other concerns beyond the picket line as well, like family. Yeah. Um, Cecilia, what about you? Uh, when the lockout, uh, the pandemic happened, how did it, it affect you? And did you think the lockout would last this long? Yeah, it was a long, last this long, but you know, the pandemic hit me just like us. It's hard for me being a single mom to to pay my bills and like financially to pay all the rent. And I was there like from the beginning to stand there like we stayed there either heat wave, heat wave and a cold weather. Yeah, it's very but you know like but what what we still there to fight mm -hmm. yeah. yeah i remember when i came up in january and it was snowing and i couldn't even stand it myself yeah i was there and I, I took you to the moon we went to the moon <laughs> <laughs> she can't stay the yeah. cold weather yeah our hands it's is frozen mm. our feet our legs the whole body so we stay like 10 minutes in a in a crystal mall Um, yeah, I think you've really described how exhausting, um, you know, being on the picket line is every day through all kinds of weather, and it's a very, it's a really, really long struggle. I'm wondering how does your family feel about all, you know, being on the picket line every day, and in what ways do they support you? I am grateful, uh, despite the situation. Um, my husband is very supportive. He listens to my concern. He he gives me advice, but he still saying that whatever you think and how you feel, I'm there hundred percent. Um, but it's really tough. Without the support, I can imagine how others with children. I don't have children, but I have my mom to look after. Um, but yeah, the support without it, it's really hard to continue and go on. Mm -hmm. And Cecilia, um, yeah, what ways did your family support you and like your son? My son is supported to me emotionally, not financially. Your union family is a part of UF. CW, he always tell me to take care of my health. He knows that I am a fighter. We've been through a lot of together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, I think it's not just like your blood family, but um, the second family you have on the picket line, um, everyone's supportive of each other as, as I witnessed. And um, I also recognize many of the workers there are, are women and Asian, so it's like Jackie and Gloria, um, all the other women, and I, I think it's really amazing how everyone supports each other. Like I remember the last week I came, I was trying to look for you at Crystal Hall, and then you told me that Gloria made Filipino food and brought it to everyone to eat. And just for the Filipino women, no, I mean maybe just the women on um, outside the library. So. You know, I think food is a great way to bring people together, and I'm wondering, yeah, how how do you stay motivated, and how do you you know keep each other's spirits up on the picket line? Uh, yes, um, we have we came from different culture, and the the in the beauty in our in United in United is oh, women are talking each other. We don't see, oh, you're from Muskipi, oh, you're from Fantas. We took each other without thinking where the party you are. You know, we, we like we're brothers and sisters. We, our the picket line become a big family, a family outside our family. Uh, yes, uh, she said, that, you know, food is the best that's connecting us. We're sharing. Uh, we learn how to eat samosa, uh, some have <laughs> learned how to eat the, the pancit, and things like that. And we get excited and we celebrate birthdays. Yeah. We have the Christmas 
we have the new year and we bring dishes and share. And it, it, it's really nice, you know, like we kind of in a moment we forgot what what we have in our shoulder. Yeah, and Cecilia, how do you feel, um, yeah, the support on the picket line and how, you know, the women and the workers are, are all united? Yeah, we celebrated birthdays and the uh, picket line. We, we are sharing all the foods to everybody. And by whoever, a birthday that day, we collect money to, to buy them a cake. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and we, each of us, like we sharing to, like to buy the food, you know, to those person uh, had a birthday. That's why we've been there in a picket line. Instead of losing weight, we gained. <laughs> 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 it's lots of food. <laughs> yeah, and yes, yes, and, and even even the community. Uh, UFCW, uh, other local community members will drop by and, and bring us coffee. Oh, we're Tim Horton. Everything is. So it's, it's just not the food that the, the community that deliver us. It's for us to feel the support yeah, yeah. that they are there, that we are not alone. Mm -hmm. So it makes us more stronger because other unions uh, dropping by, uh, BCGEU, it's EU. Uh, when we have a marching uh, uh, every day, I mean every week, and they will they, they visit us to join. And we feel so very um, motivated what the purpose of this fight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like support and like you said, from each other and from the community and from other unions, that would keep that what keeps the picket line going. Um, I think the, my, my related question is, so what, why do you fight on the picket line every day? You know, what makes you get out of bed, even though it's like raining outside or it's snowing? And what gives you the energy to come out and fight? Um, you know, when you're working for a company for 21 years, you don't just give up. You work hard to reach that year. And you have dreams. I dream to retire that company. I dream when I retire, I'll be able to talk about where I worked before, how proud I am. But what happened now is been taken from us. That dream is fading. What the hell did they to us? That's very hurting to all of the employees especially who are there from a day one. And if we don't stand ourselves now, what's gonna happen to the next generation? This fight is not only for us, it's also for the next generation. supposed to retire 2020 yeah. but the pandemic hit so I just still there supported to the young people there and keep fighting yeah. Yeah. and then my last question is how can people here in this room support the fight at Hilton we have a big rally coming up <laughs> <laughs> so um, April 14, it's where my king, the one year, uh, being left out. It means so much to all of us. If you can join us and show that what the, the company is doing is not right. And we deserve to get our job back. It's not right. The pandemic can be the reason that we cannot lose our job that we gonna lose our dreams. Pandemic should not be a reason that we gonna lose our dreams and our job that we work so hard and we love to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cecilia, did you have anything to add? Uh, yeah. 
we're only asking you guys to support us on February 14 at 5 o'clock our uh, rally in, in our hotel. Great. Well, thank you so much. Um, I'd now like to open it for Q&A if anyone um, has any questions for Lisa and Cecilia. Yep. Do you have any contact with the employer? Like, do they, can you talk to them? Do you, you know, are they available? The union. Uh, to contact the hotel lawyer. Uh, to contact the hotel. Yeah, um, so far, um, yeah, they haven't responded to us. Um, we were in bargaining sessions in the past, but we're currently working with a mediator right now, and we're hopeful for uh, a resolution soon. You know, it's been almost a year, workers have been locked out, and, you know, if management can come back with good faith and bargain with us, then that's what we'll do. That's good. Does it look hopeful now that, you know, some of the restrictions are off? Yeah, I mean, we're heading to the summer, so that we know that tourism is going to be coming back. So I think hotels are in need of workers, and Hilton Metro Town, um, I can't imagine, you know, like, what they need workers. They need their loyal, long-term, the workers who know that the, they're being in and out of the hotel. Uh, why, would, why shouldn't they bring them back? Um, yeah, the so <laughs> How are operations affected? Are there managers cleaning rooms or are there a lot of people crossing the river? How awful are they? Yeah, well, very few people cross the picket line, and you know, it's mostly management who are running the hotel. And you know, that's very concerning given, given that it's like management and, and you know, Cecilia, you know, how hard the work is. Um, they're the ones who can clean these rooms, so I don't know how the conditions are like. <laughs> I don't know how clean those rooms are. <laughs> <laughs> so, so was it all the workers that they that were locked out, or how did they? Was there something like in the collective agreement, like in terms of seniority, or why was it like those particular people that were? Yeah. Out? Do you want to answer? Right. Yes, good. Let me answer. Oh, sorry. My name's Kevin. I'm the organizers from Local 40 and, and what the employer has done in this situation is called a lockout to implementation. Uh, so you're locked out unless you agree to the company's final proposal. So it's uh, similar to the IKEA uh, 2013 situation. So uh, yes, there are a few individuals who decided to agree with the employer's proposal. So at that point, those individuals are not locked out uh, because they've agreed to the employer's last proposal. Um, I was really curious to know uh, your experiences, Lisa and Cecilia, and really thank you for sharing those experiences. In terms of being a first time, going on a strike line for the first time, because uh, we have some, I'm, I work for a union and we have some members who might be going on strike for the very first time, so what is that like? And how do you encourage other people who've never been on strike before? So, um, Miss, uh, I, I can say that if they're gonna go, uh, if there's a strike happening, I will say that they have to be united and connected each other. Because if you are not united, it, it's really hard to fight just one person or two. You need to connect each other. You need to be united, and that makes you strong. I want to thank you for sharing your stories today, and uh, you, know, you know it's a difficult time. And I, I'm commenting two-part question is, you know, the Ministry of Labor could have been intervened in 2020, uh, you know, when, when, when the whole pandemic kind of hit. But I think I want to credit um, uh, beyond your picket line. I, I think I'm curious to hear about what you describe as one of your one of the tools or, or one of the uh, support keeps keeps you united, you know, off, off the picket line as well, not just, just showing up at the picket line. And, and I sort of I have a second question, but it's more related to your collective agreement. But if. Mm -hmm. So the question is, what, what is the support off the picket line? Yes. Yeah, um, Lisa or Cecilia, like, what, what is the support outside of the picket line? 
receiving? The support that we receive is um, is most of the uh, from the local party, of course, and from the community and from our family. Um, we have. Uh, it comes to like our TV. We have some. We, there's one thing that I want to share also. We have a retired teacher, and she's amazing, so amazing. Because the support that she's giving us almost single day, she will drive to the health to deliver us breakfast and to deliver us cookies or brownies. Muffin. And it's um, and muffin. This is so amazing. Um, you know, her motivation, um, it gives us also the strength that, you know, that. You're not alone for the fight. Mm -hmm. uh, um, at her age, because she is a retired teacher, that you know, um, who it's sometimes myself. I feel, who am I to give up? I and and this lady, he, she doesn't know us, and she support us without question, without asking. So yeah. No, thank you. And, and the last part is, you know, I think I want to highlight if there is a lapse in the ESA, you know, with recall, right? And I think that falls down to the, the you know, how, how long you're laid off from a, from a job. And, and I think, is, is that one of the main core issues that's part of that lockout package uh, offer that the employer is trying to vote you? Or, or, or is that, um, has that changed? Um, Kevin, uh, yeah, I guess specifically. So before the pandemic, uh, the majority of our contracts, including the Hilton, had a six-month recall window, and that was average for an industry turnout. That definitely didn't have a pandemic in mind. Uh, and the main goal is that we want to future-proof uh, the contract so we're never in this situation again. Um, nobody should lose their job because of a pandemic. So the goal is to achieve at least a 24-month recall period if there's ever another pandemic. Thanks. Yeah, I just want to thank Lisa and Cecilia, not just sharing her stories, um, but having that courage and that tenacity in fighting, it truly is inspiring. Um, I'm a teacher, and I actually see that in, um, in my students. Um, I see your children working, and I see the burden on their shoulders, because they have to help to support families back home and to help make ends meet here. And I really feel that it is connected. Um, you know, it doesn't matter, you know, who we are and what work we do. Like we, I really do feel that connection and that solidarity. Thank you for taking out this fight. Um, my question is, um, in your organizing and connecting with your members, um, do you? Uh, what is the composition? Like, you know, both of you have started a long time ago. And uh, the conditions of the immigration, right? Like when you came to the country, as opposed to the more recent um, workers that have joined Hilton Metro Town, like is there um, how how have the conditions shifted? Um, obviously, you know there are you know workers who may be older and you know younger, um, but you know we're talking about 20 or 30 years, um, you know, a time period. And how does the difference? Um, or not, um, I'm just curious, um, how, how, how does that contribute to your organizing efforts, these different conditions? So are we talking about the, uh, the age, right, and how? Yeah, like sort of like the, you know, um, workers who have arrived um, in Canada 20 or 30 years ago, and as opposed to workers who have arrived like maybe in the last five to 10 years, um, I'm just thinking of, you know, when we organize um, workers, if, you know, we're always looking at very different conditions. So how have like kind of the, that immigration policies um, or age maybe um, affect um, your organizing? Does it make it easier, harder, what are some challenges or, When, um, when I arrived, I was a little bit younger, <laughs> and then um, it, it's, it's, it's really hard if you don't know, uh, you're just starting on, you know, 
coming to a place that you don't know. And um, it's very hard to to adapt what's happening and then I, when you walk to a place that you have you see someone and you'll be able to talk and, and someone is hearing that you're, what your worries are um, to be able to go up um, it, it, in a hotel that it's it doesn't matter how how old you are but if you are willing to to do it, the job that you are you know, working for, and then I will be able to do it. But the challenge uh, when you start is very hard. It doesn't matter how old you are. Mm -hmm. it, it's good to start, and, and it's, if you don't connect to other workers, and if you you don't know uh, where to get the help. That's very hard. Mm -hmm. And I guess, um, yeah, and I feel like when you started working from day one, um, the other coworkers have been with you for a long time, so no one has really left. Is that true? And there's only been some new staff um, coming in to work at the hotel? Yes. Um, there's, I would say, majority of what uh, the people in the lock out who are locked out and majority of them is from people one and now it's challenging for them what's gonna happen to them because we never see this coming they we never seen this happening we never we never thought that we could not be lost alone and now the question what's gonna happen to us are we do we have to we you know look for a job uh, are we able to retire? Uh, for me, I'm so far to retire. And my question to myself, what's going to be my, my next one? Do I have to keep fighting? How long is it going to fight? Because it's been almost a year. So, you know, it's really hard. Um, after the picket, we can laugh, but when we go home, there's so much in the back of our head. What's going to happen to our future? It's always when you're gonna, what's gonna happen tomorrow? That's always a question myself when I go home. I wanted to just, first off, thank you so much for, for sharing and for taking up your time to come here today. Um, I wanted to tag on to Karine's question and just ask if the conditions or expectations at work have changed over time. So in the 20 odd years you both have been working there was it always the same situation where you had to clean 14 rooms and you couldn't have the time to take a lunch break or has there something that has been changed particularly um, near the pandemic because we did see a whole bunch of strikes happening and we talked about this earlier as well in 2019 so is there something that has changed more recently that affects the conditions of work particularly in hotels that you've noticed well, I I don't know yet if something like changes, but I think they have a changes there because for a year we never do the the rooms that kind of a, you know general cleaning. So you can use that for one one room if it's very dirty, just a small room. But you can take like finish like one hour and a half. So if the company just like without the daily cleaning, so I think it's hard for the room attendant to clean like the checkout mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. So that's the yeah. Yeah. So the hotel wants to get rid of daily room cleaning. Yeah, that hotel want to get the daily cleaning, but. Freedom. I always have really quick. Yeah. Well, I think that one of the reasons why we really wanted to have workers from the United here, Hilton, is because of the fact that your struggle has been so long. So, what I really wanted to ask is, what do you think helped sustain it for so long? So, I think it connects to some of the other questions. Do you have? 
conversations on the picket line. You have, I, I mean, I've seen some photos, so I know you have fun on the picket line. Because <laughs> obviously a lot of those things are important lessons for others who might be in similar struggles because, you know, it's not often that, you know, lines are, are stretched for so long. So what do you think are things that you do on the line that continues to help sustain you for such a strong, a long struggle? Continuous communication with our colleagues. Oh yeah. We connect each other. D and D out. In the morning, how are you? A little how, a simple word, how are you? But that can be big. Um, if we notice someone go home after the picket line, we notice something that something is not right. We give them a call. We have a group chat, um, but we also come entitled to call each other, you know, separately. And connection. Because if you don't connect each other, you don't know what other person been through that day. And for calling someone, are you okay today? You seem like quiet and you're not like that. Can you, if you don't mind to share with me, if I can be of help? That means so much. Um, I seem to, I mean, I was, uh, I was sick and then I did not know that you know that people will do that but when stephanie called me and asking me how i am it means so much to me when she really literally visited me even though i did not <laughs> let her end to my to my unit <laughs> just in the lobby but that was that was special that was really big it, it means so much that someone cares someone notice you so our picket line becomes strong. We always talk each other, regardless of whatever nationality you are. We, it, it doesn't matter. If you had a coffee, some some guys at uh, picket line will say, "Hey, do you have coffee?" I said, "Oh, that would be nice if you can give me one." <laughs> no, coffee coming up. Things like that. And yeah, in the winter, the funny thing that we're doing because we're so into the COVID worry. We bring hot water, we bring lemon tea, hot honey lemon, and things like that. So we, we, like, we look at each other, we look, we take care of each other. And if someone is not feeling well, maybe you change your day up in the picket line and things like that. Yeah. We connect all the time, we look at each other. And that's very important. Any last questions? Great. Well, thank you so much for yeah listening, and I'll pass it over to Anushay. First off, that's too much quiet. So could we have a round of applause for? Us?